today I want to share with you how to ebonize wood. We will take this red oak that is started just like this and we'll turn it into this beautiful, beautiful black color wood. Now there's many times where ebonizing wood comes handy. You can make really nice um, modern furniture. You can ebonize small pieces and use them as an accent to your furniture. And I just love ebonizing wood. What is ebonizing? Ebonizing, it's a chemical reaction between uh, iron acetate and the tenons into the wood. So that means this um, procedure, this way of turning the wood black works best with uh, woods that have a lot of tenons into it. And oak is one of them, um, mahogany, cherry, uh, walnut. I don't know why you will ebonize a walnut, but I use it a lot on oak. Oak, it's affordable and it turns beautiful. It has a beautiful grain pattern. So that's what I use it with. Now, before you tell me, well, I'm going to click out of this video because I don't know what iron acetate is or where to buy it. Well, let me tell you, you don't need to buy it. You make iron acetate. All it is is four zeros steel wool. So you just get one of these steel wools. You pop it into a mason jar. I put mine in this jar. And you add distilled white vinegar, just regular kitchen vinegar, not nothing fancy. Fill up the jar, put the lid on it, and let it sit for 24 hours to, I don't know, months, or whatever you need it. Now, there are other methods of turning wood black, like this um, Speedball Super Black Ink. This is ink that uh, it's used for calligraphy. So it's very black, and it is used in furniture and, you know, woodworking because it will... Uh, turn your wood black. This is a piece that I did with the uh, ink, but the ink it's messy. It's hard to work with because it's messy and it stains everything and it gets on you. And this is such a much cleaner process. And as you will see in a second. Now, doing all my research about ebonizing wood, I came across some articles that were saying that you could actually turn the wood blacker if you use a bark uh, tree tea. So I went ahead and researched research this matter, and I went ahead and bought some bark tea. It comes in a bag like this. I bought mine from Van Dyke Supply. This is a store online. I think it was like, for this big bag, I think it was like $10. And you use like a teaspoon to make your tea. And uh, this is the name of what you're looking for to buy. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. But you make this tea solution, and then you apply that on your wood prior to applying the mixture of the steel wool with vinegar. And that supposedly makes it darker black. Now, I'm going to show you that today. We will do three samples of the oak. We will do one with uh, the, just the solution of steel wool and vinegar. Then we'll do another one with the tea and the steel wool vinegar solution. And then one with the ink, just because, you know, if you've used that ink before and you want to know for a comparison what they look like, I'm going to show you today. Now, after your steel wool and vinegar brews for a few days, it's going to look something like this. You see the steel wool is still at the top of the jar, but it is all broken down. If I take a paint stick and I mix it all around, it is all broken into tiny, tiny pieces. And you see, when I stir it, it turns this really a uh, gross brown color. Now, you really want to strain this because, you know, you don't want those pieces of steel wool on your material. So let's see. I'll be using a cup and a strainer, just a paint strainer. You can use a coffee um, you know, strainer, a coffee filter. You can use whatever you have. And I don't have another jar here, so I'm just going to scoop a ladle full of this and just strain a little bit just so we have it for this demonstration. So let's see. We don't need much. A little bit goes a long way. All right. I think I'm going to do just that for now. I'm going to put this aside so I don't knock it over accidentally. And... Let me throw this filter in the garbage. I'm going to put it in a bag just so it doesn't leak over my garbage can. 
And now here is what I have going on. I have a piece of red oak and I cut it into three parts. Now you can tell from the grain, this is all coming from the same piece. You can see the grain is continuing. I just cut one board, I cut it into three parts. And what we will do, one of them, we will just use the iron acetate, the mixture that we made with the steel wool and vinegar. So we'll use just this on this board. On this board, we'll use our bark tea, and then we'll put the iron acetate on it and see if that gets any blacker. And then on the third board, we will be using India ink. So that way we can see the differences. And then I have another piece over here. This is just an off cut from a cutting board that I made that it has walnut, maple, and cherry in it. So I'm going to put some of this iron acetate on this board just so we can see how the other woods are being affected. Great. I will start with, let's put the tea on it first in here because that one has to dry a little bit to the touch. So I have my jar of tea and I'll just use a brush and just paint it onto this one board. That way we are putting some extra tenants in there. Just like that. And now we'll just let it dry until it's dry to the touch. On this first board, we, we're done with the tea for now. So I guess I can put this one away. So on this board, we will just use our mixture. And for that, I'll just use a sponge brush, just like that. And you know what, let me do the ink first over here because then I'll just leave the camera running so you guys can see all these boards transform. And then I'll come back in five minutes and I'll you know speed up the footage so you don't have to keep looking at it for a long time. So for that one, I'll use another foam brush. And I really don't like working with this ink, it's so messy. I got it all over myself just a little bit earlier and it stains. So I'm just gonna pour some of this in here and then brush it on and i got it on my workbench even though i put this piece of plywood here and just like that and now we are done with the ink let me get the wipe absorb some of the stuff i got on my bench or smear it in my case it just smeared all over Great. This one, still wet. Uh, let's put our mixture onto the first board. Now just use this foam applicator. I should have put gloves on. I brought gloves over here to use them and I forgot to put them on. I'll use them for the second coat. All right. So easy to apply. Just brush it on. And maybe I'll give it just a little bit more. All right. Now I am going to... This is still wet a little bit. I'm going to give it another minute. I also said I'll put some on these off cuts of the cutting board. So I'm going to do that as well. All right. We'll leave that alone. Still wet. I'm going to give it one more minute. And now I'm going to put the mixture on this board. The one that had the bark tea on it. Now I'll go away and come back in five minutes to check on these mixtures.
All right, well, it's been about five minutes and from what I'm looking, I think I put too much of the solution because it's still wet. So I'm just gonna dab it with a paper towel and remove the excess and then we'll apply a second coat. All right, so here is what we have so far. The ink, as you can see, it's all black, just like that. You can still see the grain. Now, the one where we use the um, iron acetate and the uh, tea looks something like this. Pretty black, but you see more of the grain. And then here is the one where we use the iron acetate without the tea. Now, I'm going to put one more coat of the mixture on those ones. Oh, this is the one where we did over the cutting board cutting. You see, this is the original wood. And this is what it looks like with the solution. So I'm just going to put another tin coat. This time I'll go light on it. And we'll let it dry, see what this looks like. I didn't realize that my, I forgot to turn on the mic when I showed you guys just a second ago. This is the one with the ink. As you can see, it's black, it's beautiful. It's a little bit dull, like the black, it's maybe a little bit too black. Then we have the one with just the iron acetate. Here is a comparison. Beautiful, beautiful. You can see the texture, the color is very nice. And then here is the one that had the tea and the iron acetate. Let's see if I can get some light on it so you can see it. It's just very, very nice. It's not completely dry. You can see my fingerprints where I tried to see if it was dry or not. So this is the two, the one with just the iron acetate and one with the tea and the iron acetate. So very, very similar. This one might be just a tad bit darker, but I mean, they're both beautiful. Look at that. And then again, this is the one with the ink. Now I prefer to use the ebonizing solution than the ink. The ink, it's really, really messy. And then, you know, of course, if you rub on it, like just now it gets on your fingers and stuff, where this one, it's not dry now, but usually when it's dry, nothing comes off of it. Let me just, uh, I'm just going to give it a wipe to take the ex excess off from the one with the iron, um, iron acetate. So you see if I rub it, it doesn't come off. It's still black. It's so beautiful. I mean, I love it. Now, why choose ebonizing versus just painting it black? Well, because it's not the paint, it doesn't scratch us. It doesn't show scratches. So that is great, especially in a household where you have kids and things get bumped all the time and all that. Just ebonizing it, it just, you know, lasts better. Another reason, my favorite reason, is that you can still see the grain. It's not the paint, so it's not going to cover the, the wood. It's just going to penetrate it and react with the tenants and change colors. So you still get your beautiful grain onto your wood. And now the third reason why I like ebonizing uh, better than painting is because it's easier to apply and it's basically free. It is very, very cheap to make. You already have your things in the house. You can make it whenever you want and you feel like you're running out. Just mix another batch. Now, after you ebonize your wood, this is not sealed. We just changed the color. We stained it basically. You still have to apply a clear coat. You can use any clear coat you want, oil-based, water-based, it really doesn't matter. Just make sure you let it dry fully before you apply your top coat. One more tip for you, if you use a glass mason jar like I did, make sure you put some holes into the top because this thing will produce some fuzz, some bubbles, and you don't want your glass to explode. So put some holes in it to just have some air to escape there.
Now, I hope this was helpful to you and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyla Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.